Chris Cornell, born Christopher John Boyle, July 20, 1964, May 18, 2017, was an American musician, singer, and songwriter. He was the lead vocalist of the band Soundgarden and Audio Slave. He was also known for his numerous solo works and soundtrack contributions since 1991, and as founder and frontman for Temple of the Dog, the one off tribute band dedicated to his late friend Andrew Wood. Cornell was known for his role as one of the architects of the 1990s grunge movement, for his extensive catalog as a song songwriter, for his nearly four-octave vocal range, and for his powerful vocal belting technique. He released four solo studio albums, Euphoria Morning, 1999, Carry On, 2007, Scream, 2009, Higher Truth, 2015, and the live album Songbook, 2011. Cornell received a Golden Globe Award nomination for his song The Keeper which appeared in the film Machine Gun Preacher and co-wrote and performed the theme song to the James Bond film Casino Royale, 2006, You Know My Name. The last solo release prior to his death was the charity single The Promise, written for the ending credits for the film of the same name. He was voted rock's greatest singer by readers of Guitar World, ranked fourth in in the list of heavy metal's all-time top 100 vocalists by Hit Parader, ninth in the list of best lead singers of all time by Rolling Stone, and 12th in MTV's 22 Greatest Voices in Music. He was found dead in his hotel room early on May 18, 2017, following a Soundgarden concert in Detroit on May 17. The probable cause of death is suicide. Cornell struggled with mental health problems and substance abuse early in life. Equals equals early life equals equals. Cornell was born Christopher John Boyle on July 20, 19. 64 in Seattle, Washington, where he was raised. He attended Christ the King Catholic Elementary School, and Shorewood High School. His parents are Ed Boyle, a pharmacist, and Karen Cornell, an accountant. Cornell spent a two-year period between the ages of 9 and 11 solidly listening to the Beatles after finding a large collection of Beatles records abandoned in the basement of a neighbor's house. Cornell was a loner, he was able to deal with his anxiety around other people through rock music. During his teenage years, he sprawled into severe depression, dropped out of school, and almost never left the house. At the age of 12, he had access to heroin, marijuana and prescription drugs and used them daily by 13, stopped for a year, but relapsed at age 15 for another year until he turned to music. Before becoming a successful musician, he worked at a seafood wholesaler and was a sous chef at Ray's Boathouse in Seattle. In the early 1980s, Cornell was a member of a cover band called The Shemps, which performed around Seattle. The Shemps featured bassist hero Yamamoto. After Yamamoto left The Shemps, the band recruited guitarist Kim Thale. Cornell and Yamamoto stayed in contact, and after the Shemps broke up, Cornell and Yamamoto started jamming together, eventually bringing Thale to join them. Equals equals recording career equals 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 1984 to 1997, 2010 to 2017. Soundgarden equals equals equals. Soundgarden was formed in 1984 by Cornell, Thale and Yamamoto with Cornell originally on drums and vocals. In 1985, the band enlisted Scott Sundquist as the drummer to allow Cornell to concentrate on vocals. The band's first recordings were three songs that appeared on a comp compilation for C, Z Records called Deep Six. In 1986, Sundquist, who by that point had a wife and a child, decided to leave the band and spend time with his family. He was replaced by Matt Cameron, the drummer for Skin Yard, who became Soundgarden's permanent drummer. Soundgarden signed to Sub Pop, releasing the Screaming Life EP in 1987 and the FOP EP in 1988. A combination of the two was issued as Screaming Life, FOP in 1990. Though the band was being courted by major labels, in 1988 they signed to SST Records to release their debut album, Ultra Mega OK, 1988, for which they earned a Grammy Award nomination for Best Metal Performance in 1990. The band subsequently signed with A&M Records, becoming the first grunge band to sign to a major label. In 1989, the band released their second effort, and their first for a major label, Louder Than Love. Following the release of Louder Than Love, Yamamoto left the band to finish his master's degree in physical chemistry at Western Washington University. He was replaced by former Nirvana guitarist Jason Everman. Everman was fired following Soundgarden's tour supporting Louder Than Love. In 1990, the band was joined by a new bassist, Ben Shepard. Along with Alice in Chains, Nirvana, and Pearl Jam, Soundgarden became one of the most successful bands from Seattle's emerging grunge scene in the early 1990s. With Shepard, the new lineup recorded Bad Motor Finger in 1991. The album brought the band to a new level of commercial success, and Soundgarden found itself amidst the sudden popularity and attention given to the Seattle music scene. Bad Motor Finger included the singles Jesus Christ Pose, Outshined, and Rusty Cage. The three singles gained considerable 
additional airtime on alternative rock radio stations, while the videos for Outshined and Rusty Cage gained considerable airtime on MTV. The song Jesus Christ Pose and its music video was the subject of widespread controversy in 1991, and the video was removed from MTV's playlist. Rusty Cage was later covered by Johnny Cash on his 1996 album, Unchained. It also appeared on the fictional radio station Radio X on the video game Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas and in the 32-bit version of Road Rash. Room A Thousand Years Wide was released previously as a single in 1990, but not to promote the album. It was released, with the song HIV Baby, as a 7th through sub-pop single of the month club a full year before the release of Bad Motor Finger. The song was re-recorded for this album. Bad Motor Finger was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Metal Performance in 1992. It was also ranked number 45 in the October 2006 issue of Guitar World on the magazine's list of the 100 greatest guitar albums of all time. Super Unk Noun became the band's breakthrough album. Upon its release in March 1994, Super Unk Noun debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. The album launched several successful singles, including Spoon Man and Black Hole Sun, and brought Soundgarden international recognition. Super Unk Noun achieved quintuple platinum status in the United States, triple platinum status in Canada, and gold status in the United Kingdom, Sweden, and the Netherlands. Rolling Stone gave Super Unk Noun 4 out of 5 stars. Reviewer J.D. Considine said Super Unk Noun demonstrates far greater range than many bands manage in an entire career. Considine criticized Black Hole Sun and Half, stating that the former is not a very good song while the latter is the virtual definition of a B-side. John Perla of the New York Times said that Super Unk Noun actually tries to broaden its audience by breaking heavy metal genre barriers that Soundgarden used to accept. He added that Soundgarden wants something different from standard heavy metal. David Brown of Entertainment Weekly gave the album an A. He said, Soundgarden is pumped and primed on Super Unk Noun, and they deliver the goods. He praised it as a hard rock milestone, a boiling vat of volcanic power, record-making smarts, and, 90s anime and anxiety that sets a new standard for anything called metal. The album was nominated for the Grammy Award for Best Rock Album in 1995. Two singles from Super Unk Noun, Black Hole Sun and Spoon Man, won Grammy Awards, and the music video for Black Hole Sun won AMTV Video Music Award and a Clio Award. Super Unk Noun was ranked number 336 on Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, and Black Hole Sun was ranked number 25 on VH1's list of the 100 greatest songs of the 90s. The band's fifth album was 1996's self-produced Down on the Upside. The album spawned several singles, including Pretty News, Burden in My Hand, and Blow Up the Outside World. The album was notably less heavy than the group's preceding albums, and marked a further departure from the band's grunge roots. Soundgarden explained at the time that it wanted to experiment with other sounds. David Brown of Entertainment Weekly said, Few bands since Led Zeppelin have so crisply mixed instruments both acoustic and electric. However, tensions within the group arose during the sessions, with Thale and Cornell reportedly clashing over Cornell's desire to shift away from the heavy guitar riffing that had become the band's trademark. Despite favorable reviews, the album did not match the sales of Super Unk Noun. In 1997, Soundgarden received another Grammy nomination, for the lead single Pretty Noose. Due to tensions within the band, reportedly due to internal strife over its creative direction, Soundgarden announced it was disbanding on April 9, 1997. In a 1998 interview, Thale said, it was pretty obvious from everybody's general attitude over the course of the previous half-year that there was some dissatisfaction. On January 1, 2010, Cornell alluded to a Soundgarden reunion via his Twitter account, writing, the 12-year break is over and school is back in session. Sign up now. Knights of the Sound Table Ride Again. The message linked to a website that features a picture of the group performing live and a place for fans to enter their email address to get updates on the reunion. Entering that information unlocks an archival video for the song Get on the Snake, from Soundgarden's second studio album, 1989's Louder Than Love. In April 2010, Soundgarden announced their plans to headline Lollapalooza 20 2010. Soundgarden made the announcement through their website and email list. On April 16, 2010, Soundgarden held a secret show at the Showbox Theater on First Avenue in downtown Seattle publicized via the band's mailing list. The show was billed as New to Dragons, an anagram for Soundgarden. Asked in August 2010 if Soundgarden will record new material, Cornell replied, it would be exciting to record one song, to hear how Soundgarden-ish that might be this much time later. But for me, it's been more of a trip relearning the songs and playing them together. Some of the songs we're approaching we've never played live. Soundgarden made their first television appearance since their reunion on Conan O'Brien's second episode of Conan on November 9, 2010 on TBS 
US and toured North America in summer 2011. In summer 2012, Soundgarden released a new single and video, Live to Rise, for the Avengers movie soundtrack. Their sixth album, King Animal, was released in November 2012 to largely positive reviews. Cornell re-recorded the song Seasons for the film Man of Steel in 2013. Soundgarden had continued to tour worldwide and guitarist Kim Thale mentioned in several interviews that the band was to begin work on material for their seventh album. Equals 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 1998 to 2000, 2006 to 2017, solo career equals equals equals. In 1998, Cornell began working on material for a solo album on which he collaborated with Alan Johannes and Natasha Schneider of the band Eleven. The album, titled Euphoria Morning, was released on September 21, 1999. In his first ever solo tour Cornell spent seven months on the road from September 13, 1999 to March 7, 2000 playing 61 shows in support of Euphoria Morning. Cornell performed two of those coinciding with the debut of the album on September 21 and 22, 1999 at the Henry Fonda a theater in Hollywood, California. Attendance for the shows were high, considering he performed the initial shows before fans were even familiar with the music. The touring band was made up of some of the contributing musicians Alan Johannes, Natasha Schneider, Rick Markman, and Greg Upchurch. The album proved commercially unsuccessful although the album's single Can't Change Me was nominated for Best Male Rock Vocal Performance at the 2000 Grammy Awards. Euphoria Morning includes Wave Goodbye, Cornell's tribute to his late friend Jeff Buckley. It has been noted that Euphoria Morning is influenced by Buckley's songwriting and distinctive vocal style. He also contributed the song Sun Shower, a bonus track on the Japanese release of Euphoria Morning, to the soundtrack of the 1998 film, Great Expectations, and a reworked version of the track Mission, retitled Mission 2000, was used on the soundtrack to the 2000 film, Mission, Impossible 2. An unreleased song called Heart of Honey was also recorded in collaboration with Johannes and Schneider during this period. According to Alan Johannes, Heart of Honey was recorded for the film Titan AE, but not used. Cornell and composer David Arnold collaborated on the song You Know My Name, which Cornell co-wrote and performed and which accompanies the opening titles for the 2006 James Bond film, Casino Royale. You Know My Name is the first theme song since 1983's Octopussy to use a different title than the film, the first ever sung by a male American, and the first ever title theme song that did not appear on the soundtrack album. You Know My Name won a 2006 Satellite Award in the category of Best Original Song, and a 2007 World Soundtrack Award in the category of Best Original Song Written Directly for a Film. The song was also nominated for Best Song Written for a Motion Picture, Television or Other Visual Media at the 2008 Grand Grammy Awards. This song became the first song recorded for his solo album, which he began work on in 2007. Though not officially released onto CD, an hour-long acoustic concert Cornell performed on September 7, 2006 at O'Baron in Stockholm, is widely available for download under the title Chris Cornell, Unplugged in Sweden. A promotional CD for his solo album, Carry On, was released in March 2007, titled The Roads We Choose, a retrospective. The 17-song CD included songs from Soundgarden, Temple of the Dog, Audio Slave and Cornell's solo work. On June 5, 2007, Cornell released his second solo album, Carry On, produced by Steve Lillywhite. It debuted at number 17 on the American Billboard charts. Among the artists who accompanied him on his second solo release was friend Gary Lucas, who contributed acoustic guitar to some of the tracks. Cornell has stated that he is always writing, and that there are some songs that he was not able to put onto an audio slave album. While recording his second solo album, Cornell was involved in a motorcycle accident. He was apparently rear-ended by a truck in Studio City, Los Angeles while riding his motorcycle and catapulted 20 feet into the air. He was able to walk away from the accident, but had severe cuts and bruises. He returned to the studio later that day. In 2007, Cornell appeared as support to Aerosmith on at least two legs of their 2007 world tour, Dublin, London, and Hyde Park, and to Lincoln Park in Australia and New Zealand. These shows formed part of his own ongoing world tour which began in April 2007 and continued into 2008 and 2009. Cornell has described his touring band, comprising guitarists Yogi Lonich and Peter Thorne, bassist Corey McCormick and drummer Jason Sutter, as musicians that could get the whole picture playing music by Soundgarden and Audio Slave, as well as his solo material. In 2008, Cornell was featured on the main stage of Linkin Park's Project Revolution tour. Throughout the tour, Cornell collaborated with Chester Bennington from Linkin Park while performing Hunger Strike, and with Street Drum Corps for a number of his Soundgarden tracks. While Linkin Park would perform their Grammy-winning song Crawling, he would appear on stage 
Lynch singing the second verse of the song, the outro, and harmonies Aaron Lewis provided for the reanimation version. Cornell worked with producer Timbaland on his studio album Scream, which was released on March 10, 2009. Timbaland has referred to the recording sessions as the best work I've done in my career, and predicted that Cornell will be the first rock star in the club. Cornell called the new album a highlight of my career. The album was largely panned by critics, but was the highest charting album of Cornell's solo career, reaching 10 on the Billboard 200. On April 2, 2009, Cornell took over Atlanta Rock Station, Project 961, WKLS. For 24 hours the station became Chris FM and included a two-hour special of Cornell DJing and playing his favorite songs of his career with the stories behind them leading up to a rebroadcast of his solo show from the previous night. On September 11, 2009, Cornell performed John Lennon's Imagine on The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. In January 2011 Cornell announced his solo acoustic songbook tour, following on from a series of acclaimed solo acoustic shows in Los Angeles during 2009 and 2010. The first leg of the sold-out tour began on April 1, 2011 and continued through the US and Canada until May 6, resuming in October and visiting New Zealand, Australia, South America and the US, ending December 17. The tour received universally positive reviews. In August 20 2011 Cornell released The Keeper, an original song written for the Mark Forster-directed 2011 film Machine Gun Preacher and nominated in 2012 for a Golden Globe Award. For the first 24 hours of release, the song was exclusively available as part of the Donate to Download campaign for Sam Childers' Angels of East Africa Children's Charity. The song is also the lead track on the film's soundtrack album. In November 2011 Cornell released Songbook, an acoustic live album featuring songs recorded during Cornell's Songbook tour in North America. America. It was his first live album as a solo artist and includes stripped-down solo performances of songs from Cornell's whole career as a solo artist as well as with Soundgarden, Audio Slave, Temple of the Dog plus covers of Led Zeppelin's Thank You and John Lennon's Imagine. The album received largely positive reviews, with Al Musik, calling it Cornell's best solo offering to date. Cornell continued his songbook tour in Europe and the US during 2012 and 2013 to further acclaim. In January 2015, Cornell announced via his Twitter account that he was in the studio recording a new solo album. Cornell's new studio album, Higher Truth, was released on September 18, 2015. The last solo release prior to his death, was the charity single The Promise, written for the ending credits for the movie of the same name about the Armenian Genocide. Equals 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 2000 2001 to 2007, Audio Slave equals equals equals. Audio Slave was formed after Zach De La Roca left Rage Against the Machine and the remaining members were searching for another vocalist. Producer and friend Rick Rubin suggested that they contact Cornell. Rubin played the Soundgarden song Slaves and Bulldozers for the remaining Rage Against the Machine band members to showcase his ability. Cornell was in the writing process of a second solo album, but decided to shelve that and pursue the opportunity to work with Tom Morello, Tim Comerford and Brad Wilk when they approached him. Morello described Cornell, he stepped to the microphone and sang the song and I couldn't believe it. It didn't just sound good, it didn't sound great, it sounded transcendent. And, when there is an irreplaceable chemistry from the first moment, you can't deny it. The quartet wrote 21 songs during 19 days of rehearsal and began working in the studio in late May 2001. Their debut album, Audio Slave, released in November 2002, spawned hits such as Cochise, Like a Stone and Show Me How to Live, and has reached triple platinum status in the United States. The band was nearly derailed before the album's release, Cornell was going through alcohol problems and a slot on the Ozfest tour was cancelled. During this time, there was a rumor that Cornell had checked himself into drug rehabilitation. He later confirmed it in an interview with Metal Hammer that was conducted from a clinic payphone. In a San Diego City Beat article, Cornell explained that he went through a horrible personal crisis during the making of the first record, staying in rehab for two months and separating from his wife. The problems were ironed out and he has remained sober since this time. The band toured through 2003, before resting in 2004 to record their second album. Audio Slave's second album, Out of Exile, was released in May 2005 and debuted at number one on the U.S. charts. The album has since gone on to achieve platinum status. The album features the singles Out of Exile, Be Yourself, Your Time Has Come, and Doesn't Remind Me. Cornell admitted to writing his most personal songs ever on this album, influenced by the positive changes in his life since 2002. He also described the album as more varied than the debut and relying less on heavy guitar riffs. Critics initially described Audio Slave as an amalgamation of Rage Against the Machine and Soundgarden, but by the band's second album, Out of Exile, noted that they had established a separate identity. The album was received more favorably than Audio Slave's debut. 
Critics noted Cornell's stronger vocals, likely the result of quitting smoking and drinking, and pointed out that Out of Exile is the sound of a band coming into its own. Al Musik praised the album as lean, hard, strong, and memorable. The lyrics, however, were still a common complaint. Musicom.com wrote that Cornell's lyrics continue to border on the ridiculous. On May 6, 2005, Audio Slave played a free show in Havana, Cuba. Audio Slave became the first American rock group to perform a concert in Cuba, playing in front of an audience of 70,000. The band traveled to Havana on May 4 to interact with Cuban musicians. Cornell commented, Hopefully, this concert will help to open the musical borders between our two countries. The 26-song set concert was the longest the band had ever played. In early 2006 the band returned, recording their third album as they had written most of the material during the tour. The band released the album, titled Revelations, in September 2006. Revelations was influenced by 1960s and 1970s funk and R&B music. The first two singles were Original Fire and Revelations. Two of the songs from the third album, Shape of Things to Come and Wide Awake were also prominently featured in Michael Mann's 2006 film, Miami Vice, prior to the release of the album. Despite the exposure to other forms of media and the positive critical buzz for their third album, Audio Slave did not tour behind the release. They went into hiatus to allow Cornell to complete You Know My Name, the theme song for the 2006 James Bond film, Casino Royale, and Morello to pursue his own solo work under the moniker of the Night Watchman. All of Audio Slave's lyrics were written by Cornell, whilst all four members were credited with writing the music. Their songwriting process was described by Wilk as more collaborative and satisfying satisfying than Rage Against the Machines, which was a battle creatively. Cornell, for his part, saw Soundgarden's songwriting method as inferior to Audio Slaves. Cornell's lyrics were mostly apolitical. Audio Slaves Morello referred to them as haunted, existential poetry. They were characterized by his cryptic approach, often dealing with themes of existentialism, love, hedonism, spirituality and Christianity. Cornell's battle with addiction to prescription drugs and alcoholism was a defining factor in the writing and recording process. Even though the singer admitted admitted that he was never able to write effectively while drinking, and attended rehab after recording the debut album, Morello stated that Revelations was the first record Cornell didn't smoke, drink or take drugs through the recording. However, Morello said, Chris was stone sober during the making of our Out of Exile album. Chris was also sober during the making of Revelations and prior to recording he gave up smoking as well. I apologize for any confusion or concern that was stirred up by the original article. Sobriety can be a matter of life or death and Chris' courage in maintaining his health for years has been an inspiration. News about Cornell's departure emerged in July 2006, when insiders stated that after the third album he would leave to pursue for a solo career. The singer immediately denied the rumors, stating, We hear rumors that Audio Slave is breaking up all the time. I always just ignore them. On February 15, 2007, Cornell officially announced his departure from Audio Slave, stating that due to irresolvable personality conflicts as well as musical differences, I am permanently leaving the band Audio Slave. I wish the other three members nothing but the best in all of their future endeavors. As the other three members were busy with the Rage Against the Machine reunion with De La Roca coming back, and Morello and Cornell had each released solo albums in 2007, Audio Slave officially disbanded. On January 17, 2017, it was announced that Audio Slave would reunite for their first show in 12 years at Prophets of Rage's anti-inaugural ball, protesting President Donald Trump's inauguration as President of the United States. The event took place on January 20, 2017. Asked in February 2017 if there would be more Audio Slave reunion shows in the future, frontman Cornell replied, It's always a possibility. I mean, we've been talking about it for at least three or four years now. We were talking about actually picking dates, and it just ended up not working out because everybody's so busy. They have another band again, they all have separate bands that they do themselves, I have Soundgarden and a solo career that's taking up a lot of time, and I just did Temple of the Dog. So, it's really honestly as simple as we end up having a window of time where it's comfortable for everybody and we want to do it, because I definitely feel like everybody's up for it. Equals equals other musical projects equals 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 Center for Disease Control Boys equals equals equals. From 1986 to 1987, Cornell was also a member of the satirical Western swing band Center for Disease Control Boys equals 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 Temple 
example of the dog equals equals equals. While still in Soundgarden, Cornell recorded an album with members of what would become Pearl Jam. This collaboration went under the name Temple of the Dog, and the self-titled album was released in 1991. The album is a tribute to their mutual friend, and Cornell's former roommate, Andrew Wood. Wood, the former lead singer of Mother Love Bone, had died of a heroin overdose the year before. Jeff Ament and Stone Gassard of Mother Love Bone teamed up with Mike McCready, new vocalist Eddie Vedder, and drummer Dave Cruson in 1990, forming Pearl Jam. Cameron would eventually become Pearl Jam's drummer in 1998. Temple of the Dog has gone on to sell more than a million copies, thanks in large part to the singles Say Hello to Heaven and Hunger Strike, the latter of which features a duet between Cornell and Vedder. This was the first time Vedder was recorded professionally. During a 2003 Pearl Jam show at the Santa Barbara Bowl, Cornell appeared as a surprise guest. After playing a short acoustic set, Cornell joined Vedder and the rest of the band to perform Hunger Strike and Reach Down. On October 6, 2009, Cornell made a surprise appearance during a Pearl Jam concert at the Gibson Amphitheater in Los Angeles. The reunited Temple of the Dog played Hunger Strike. At the end of the concert, Cornell took a bow with the band along with Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. Equals 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 Alice Mudgarden equals equals equals. Cornell, together with Mark Arm of Mudhoney, contributed vocals on the Alice in Chains song Right Turn from the 1992 EP, Sap, although the band given credit for this song is Alice Mudgarden. Equals 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 MACC. Equals equals equals. In 1992, Cornell and three other former members of Temple of the Dog played under the name MACC, McCready, Amant, Cameron, Cornell, recording the song Hey Baby, New Rising Sun, for the 1993 album, Stone Free, a tribute to Jimi Hendrix, equals 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 collaborations equals equals equals, Cornell worked as a co-producer and backing vocalist on the Screaming Trees 1991 album, Uncle Anesthesia, he acted in a cameo role in an onstage performance in Cameron Crowe's 1992 Seattle-based film, Singles, he also contributed his solo song Seasons, and Soundgarden's song Birth Ritual, to the singles soundtrack. Cornell contributed vocals on Alice Cooper's Stolen Prayer and Unholy War, which he also wrote, from the 1994 album, The Last Temptation. In 1997, Cornell collaborated with Eleven on a rendition of the song, Ave Maria, for the Christmas compilation album, A Very Special Christmas 3. Cornell has also performed live with the band Linkin Park. It was incorrectly believed, for many years, that Cornell had written the Eleven song Someone to Die For on the 2004 Spider-Man 2 soundtrack, but this was corrected in an interview in April 2007. The song is performed by Jimmy Necco of Ars and Brian May of Queen. Cornell had recorded a demo of the song some time earlier, which was released only to members of the 11 Street team. Cornell co-wrote, with Brian Howes, David Cook's first post-American Idol album single, Light On, released in 2008. And in 2009, he contributed vocals on the song, Mr. Dirt, from the album, Good Night Melody by Joshua David. Cornell sang one song, which he co-wrote, on Slash, Slash's solo record released in April 2010. The song is called Promise and it was premiered at Amazon.com on March 26, 2010. He contributed vocals on the song, Lies, on the 2010 album, Third and Double, by Gabin which was subsequently released as a single in October 2010. Cornell appears on the Carlos Santana album Guitar Heaven, the greatest guitar classics of all time, where he sings on the cover of Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love. In September 2011, he joined members of Pearl Jam for a Temple of the Dog live reunion at the two-day PJ20 Festival at Alpine Valley, Wisconsin. On January 30, 2015, Cornell joined Mike McCready and Barrett Martin plus Duff McKagan, the Seattle Symphony and others in a special, Sonic Evolution, concert at Seattle's Benaroya Hall in a tribute to Mad Season. The performance was released as a live album. Equals equals musical style equals equals. Cornell's songwriting often features non-standard chord progressions and melodies that do not conform with one diatonic scale. A prominent example is Black Hole Sun, which not only involves many kinds of open chords and several key changes in short sequences, but also unique melodies phrases with large interval jumps. A recurrent characteristic is his use of major-only chord sequences, sweet euphoria, pretty noose, which also leads to more subtle key changes. Cornell had a multi-octave range. He was a baritone with an ability to sing extremely high in the tenor range, as well as in the lower register of a baritone voice. He showcased this in various songs, most notably the studio and the demo versions of Beyond the Wheel, where he can be heard spanning three octaves. He also experimented with various different vocal styles, ranging from light falsetto 
falsetto to brutal screams and chants, in addition to singing rock and metal mainly with Soundgarden and Audio Slave, Cornell sang the blues, Neo Soul and stripped down acoustic numbers, equals equals other work equals equals, Cornell made a cameo in the 1992 film Singles, Cornell was the face of fashion producer John Barbato's 2006 ad campaign, he became a restaurateur with the opening of his restaurant, Black Calavados, in Paris, he was also the owner of the music publishing company You Make Me Sick I Make Music, Cornell planned to turn Phil Carlo's true crime book The Night Stalker, The Life and Crimes of Richard Ramirez, into a film, collaborating with him to produce the screenplay, equals equals personal life equals equals, Cornell was first married to Susan Silver, the manager of Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, they had a daughter, Lillian John, born in June 2000, he and Silver divorced in 2004, in December 2008, Cornell reported via his official website that he had finally won back his collection of 15 guitars after a four-year court battle with Silver, in 2004 he married Vicky Karayiannis, a Paris-based American publicist of Greek heritage, the couple had a daughter together, Tony, in September 2004, and a son, Christopher Nicholas, in December 2005. Cornell converted to the Greek Orthodox Church through her influence. In 2012, the Cornells created the Chris and Vicky Cornell Foundation, which works for homeless, poor, abused and, or neglected children. In 2013 a portion of proceeds from ticket sales went to benefit the cause. Cornell had multiple addictions, which he was able to manage from roughly 1980 until 1997, when Soundgarden broke up and his first marriage was failing. At that point he turned to Oxycontin and other substances. He checked into rehab in 2002. When asked how he beat them, he stated, it was a long period of coming to the realization that this way, sober, is better. In a 2011 interview, Cornell said the major change with the reformed Soundgarden was a lack of alcohol, the biggest difference I noticed, and we haven't even really talked about it, there are no bottles of Jack Daniels around our beers, and we never talked about it, it's just not there, equals equals death equals equals, around 12.15 a.m. on May 18, 2017. Cornell was found dead by his bodyguard in the bathroom of his room at the MGM Grand in Detroit after performing at a show with Soundgarden at the Fox Theater on May 17. He was lying on the floor with an exercise band around his neck. Paramedics arrived at the scene just before 1 a.m. and performed CPR on him. Cornell was pronounced dead at 1.30 a.m. on May 18. The cause of death was determined to be suicide by hanging. Cornell was 52 years old. Footage of his final concert was posted to YouTube. Cornell's widow Vicky and family attorney Kirk passage have disputed the coroner's conclusion that Cornell's death was a suicide. When interviewed after Cornell's death, Vicky questioned whether he would intentionally take his own life. She stated that during a phone conversation, her husband was slurring his words and that he had taken Ativan. Concerned about him, she then contacted security and asked that they check on him. Soundgarden's drummer, Matt Cameron, was the first of Cornell's former bandmates to comment on his death saying my dark night is gone via Facebook. Pearl Jam, who Cameron also drums for, released a tribute on their website with a picture of Cornell entitled Chris. Cornell's funeral is scheduled to take place on May 26, 2017 in Los Angeles. Equals equals discography equals equals. Cornell released five solo albums. Soundgarden produced six albums, five eps and two greatest hits compilations. He released three albums with Audio Slave and one album with Temple of the Dog. Despite this large discography he only released one retrospective compilation which was given a limited release. Cornell also produced an album for Screaming Trees and had his music featured on one mixtape. Solo releases, Euphoria Morning, 1999, Carry On, 2007, Scream, 2009, Songbook, 2011, Higher Truth, 2015, Albums with Soundgarden, Albums with Audio Slave, Album with Temple of the Dog, Temple of the Dog, 1991, equals equals awards and nominations equals equals, equals equals references equals equals, equals equals external links equals equals, official website, Chris Cornell at Al Music, Chris Cornell at the Internet Movie Database.